we know things have gotten very difficult for brick and mortar retailers, right? I mean, thanks to the endless competition from Amazon. But there's another side to this story, a positive one. The ascendance of e-commerce may be putting a lot of old school merchants out of business, but it's also creating new opportunities. For example, if Amazon or another other online retailer is going to ship their goods all over the world, that means they need a lot of warehouses and distribution centers. Which brings me to Prologis, PLD, a real estate investment trust that specializes in logistics and fulfillment space. Here's a company that does a ton of business with Amazon, along with the companies in a host of far-ranging industries, from retailers to supermarkets, food, auto companies. In fact, Prologis calls itself the world's leading owner, operator, and developer of logistics real estate. If you want to own a REIT, but you don't want to go near the retail-oriented ones like the mall players, Prologis just might be for you. Just this morning, the company reported a very strong quarter, delivered a four-cent earnings beat off of 46-cent basis, driven by higher rents, and the company also gave some extremely bullish full-year guidance. Hence why the stock rallied at buck 60 or 2.7% today. Can it keep climbing? Let's take a closer look with Hamid Mogadam. He is the chairman and CEO of Prologis. Hear more about the quarter, where the company is headed. Mr. Mogadam, welcome back to Mad Money. Yeah. Hi, Jim. How are you doing? Hamid, this was a fabulous quarter, and I think you laid it out so well. We are in a situation where there is just not enough space right now for all of the e-commerce and for all the shipping has to be done. That is the ideal environment for your company, isn't it? It sure is, and it's really broader than e-commerce. I mean, uh, it's all consumption-related. And, you know, uh, supply has been very disciplined in the last couple of years, and, uh, and demand has been really strong. So the combination of those two have made the best market of my career. Wow. I mean, that's saying something, because I know in the previous quarter there had been some concern that there was going to be a lot more building, and that didn't happen this quarter, right? Yeah, you know, there were, there were some uh, starts ahead of our expectations last quarter, and we'll really see the effects of those uh, early next year. Uh, but, of course, uh, we sounded the word of caution, and, uh, and that extra supply did not keep up this quarter. So I think we'll be fine. We actually could use more supply because I think some of the demand today is constrained by the lack of availability of space, and, uh, and some more supply could help with that situation. Okay, well, let me ask you about that. I, I was going to ask you a question about how you differentiate. We'll get to that in a moment. In a, in a perfect world, uh, a, a developer should be able to go to a bank and get a loan and put up the property because there's demand. What is wrong with our system right now? And I know you're also a worldwide company, but in the United States, that that's not occurring. Well, you know, the banking issues are only part of it. Uh, but uh, in our sector, the buildings are getting bigger. So a typical, call it 800,000 square foot, million square foot building, needs 70 acres of land. And if you want to build a good one, you want to build it in a major city, uh, New York, LA, San Francisco. And, you know, it's just tough to find 70 acres of land and get the permits to build a facility like that uh, and to find the employees to operate it. So it's not just uh, the banks that are holding supply back but it's uh, in becoming increasingly difficult to find property uh, to build on. Boy, that's a great story of scarcity. I hadn't even thought about that. I, I also wanted to focus on the fact that you've got tremendous data. We have been talking about companies that have scale. If, if they have, whether it be Netflix, frankly, or whether it be Amazon, or whether it be a company like PepsiCo, there's a client. They have so much scale, they can actually figure out the future to some degree. You have got a tremendous data mining situation going for you, don't you? You know, Jim, I think in 10 years, we're going to think about our business as not just a real estate business, but also a very significant data business. And I think that data is going to help our customers. It's going to help our own decision making. And who knows, if we're really successful at this, it could be a separate business that could be valued separately by the market. It's way too early to get that far ahead mm -hmm. of our skis. But I'm really excited about those opportunities. And when you talk about scale, I mean, yes, Prologis uh, owns and operates about 700 million square feet of space. But if you really look at our individual market positions, like, for example, in Los Angeles, the most dynamic market in this country, 1% supply uh, or vacancy today in Los Angeles, we own 72 million square feet of space. If you add up our next five uh, competitors uh, that are public, uh, they amount to about 20% of that amount in aggregate. So the differential advantage that we have, not only in terms of information, 
but in terms of customer relationships, the ability to drive down costs and operate the business efficiently, I think, uh, I think it's just a tremendous mousetrap. And of course, our industry is anchored in this concept of NAV. What are our buildings worth? And you know that approach doesn't really take into account the differential benefits that Prologis has uh, with respect to operating these buildings. So I want to build a company, we want to build a company where a dollar of real estate attached to our platform is worth a lot more than a dollar. Well, I like that. The other thing I think there's a bunch of trends going on that are great for you. I wish we could spend a lot of time together, but the Amazon to buy Whole Foods is an example of a trend that you've always talked about, which is you need to have real estate distribution centers closer to the customer. This is an ongoing trend that not only Amazon's figured out, but obviously companies are taking action on it and using Prologis. Absolutely. You know, one way of getting closer to customers in these major cities is that they're not making new real estate. So we're going infill in some of these markets like New York, Seattle, San Francisco, and actually building, building multi-story warehouses, which are really a novelty in the U.S. Of course, we're used to it because we do a lot of this stuff uh, overseas in Japan and, uh, and in China and places. But this is the time that the U.S. is going to have some vertical warehouses, multi-story in infill uh, areas, because that's the only way you're going to accommodate the, the demand that's coming from all these different players. Well, you would just have a great story, sir. And I, I was concerned, candidly, because you put the idea in my head that there was going to be too many starts. Now that that's away, the scarcity value for both your company, but also just for the equity. I don't have a lot of stocks that are doing what you're doing are terrific. That's Hamid Mogadam, chairman and CEO of Prologis. What a terrific company. This is another way to play just commerce in general, not just e-commerce. Mad Money's back into the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.